soft, squishy, pillowy, and impossibly light, gleaming on the outside from a shiny honey butter glaze. These are the best buns you will ever eat. Hey there, <laughs> welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sheldon, but my friends call me Sheldo, so why don't you do the same? Today we're making the softest potato buns ever. They are the perfect way to use up any leftover mashed potatoes from the holidays. Alternatively, if you don't have leftover potatoes, these buns are almost as easy to make from scratch. Let's jump right in and I'll show you a quick five minute potato shortcut. If you do have leftover potatoes, feel free to skip ahead to this timestamp. All right, so we're gonna steam the potatoes in the microwave. This is by far the quickest way to cook potatoes. I've got a medium sized yellow skin potato here, but really any kind will do. Rusted, Yukon Gold, Red Skin, whatever you've got on hand, as long as it's about medium size or so. Peel the potatoes and cut them into half inch chunks. Throw the chunks into a microwave safe bowl along with a teaspoon or two of water. Cover the bowl tightly with plastic wrap and poke a little hole to vent out any steam. If you don't want to use plastic, a plate that fits tightly will also work here. You may just need to add a little bit more water to account for any evaporation. We're gonna microwave on high for around five to six minutes. Afterwards, make sure you're wearing gloves, it'll be very hot. Check that the potatoes are pretty soft. If not, throw them back in the microwave for another couple minutes. Using a fork or whatever your weapon of choice, give the potatoes a cursory mash. Then throw in a knob of butter, say a tablespoon, and mash that around until melted. Finish off with a splash of cold milk, about two to three tablespoons or so, just enough to thin out the consistency to that of a regular mashed potato. This cold milk will also help cool down the mixture so that we can use it right away in our dough. The best thing about this whole recipe is how forgiving it is. The dough is so friendly and will accommodate a lot. So no real need to be too fussy about the measurements here for the mashed potato. Anything will do. Honestly, even instant mashed potato will be just fine. As long as we end up with about a half cup of mashed potato in the end. I ended up with exactly a half cup of potato here, which is awesome. But if you have a little bit more or a little bit less, that's totally fine too. Just go ahead and use it. I just wouldn't use too, too, too much more because it'll end up weighing down the buns. All right, with our mashed potato ready, let's crack on with the dough. Welcome back to those of you who already had leftover mashed potatoes. To a stand mixer bowl, add a half cup of mashed potato, then dump in all of your liquid ingredients, which should all be at room temperature to help the bread rise faster later. One cup or 240 grams of milk, one large egg, and 56 grams or four tablespoons of butter that's been softened. Semi-melted is fine too, honestly. I microwave mine for about 15 seconds. Next goes in 45 grams or three tablespoons of sugar and 12 grams or two teaspoons of salt. Follow that up with 560 grams or four cups of bread flour. The higher protein content in bread flour will help make our buns fluffy and chewy. All purpose flour will also work here. The buns might just turn out a little bit softer. Lastly, eight grams or two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast goes in. If you're using active dry, use 10 grams or just under a tablespoon. Whether instant or active dry, there's no need to bloom the yeast beforehand. Just add it straight to the bowl. Fit your mixer with the dough hook and slowly increase the speed up to medium. Mix until everything has come together into one mass. Give it a little scrape down the sides if anything sticks. Then turn the speed down to low and knead until the dough is smooth, elastic, and passes the window pane test, around 10 to 12 minutes total. What is the window pane test? Well, it's a way of telling proper gluten development in a dough. I'm grabbing a small piece of dough and rolling it into a smooth ball. Then using my fingers, I'll try to gently coax and stretch out the dough. At the very beginning of kneading, the gluten is still underdeveloped and I can't stretch out this piece of dough without it tearing. After kneading for five minutes, I can form more of a thinner film now, but it still breaks quite easily. After about 12 minutes of kneading, I can now gently stretch out the dough and form a thin membrane. 
This is the window pane and is a sign that the dough is ready and enough gluten has developed. Now we can stop the mixer and remove the dough from the bowl. Give it a few final kneads on the surface and shape it into a smooth ball. I'm using my hands to pull the bottom of the ball towards me along the counter, then rotating and repeating in order to build a nice tight surface. Add some oil to the mixer bowl or another large clean bowl. Use the dough ball to spread the oil in the bowl while simultaneously coating itself in oil. Place the dough in the bowl smooth side up. Cover and keep in a warm draft free place until doubled in size about an hour or so, but that'll depend on the temperature of your kitchen. Why do mashed potatoes make this bread so soft? Well, it's all about the potato starch. When heated, the starches in the potato swell up and absorb many times their weight in water, effectively binding and holding on to this water. This process is called gelatinization. By adding gelatinized starches to our bread dough, we're increasing the moisture content of the dough without making the dough feel too wet and sticky. This increased moisture makes the bread softer, increases how much it rises in the oven, and even helps to keep the bread soft and fresh for days after baking. After an hour, the dough has risen and become plump, airy, and beautifully smooth. Now, my favorite part of bread making. I get to punch down and deflate the dough in the bowl. Then turn the dough out onto the surface, keeping the smooth side up. We wanna keep track of the smooth side because it'll make our lives easier when shaping later. Thoroughly pat down the dough to evenly deflate it and shape it into a rough rectangle. During the first rise, the gas bubbles created in the dough are very irregular. By deflating, shaping, and rising again, we can control the size of the gas bubbles, creating a nice, even crumb. Divide the dough into 12 equal portions, again keeping track of the smooth side of the dough. I like to weigh out each of my dough portions so that all the buns end up the same size. Here I'm aiming for around 88 to 89 grams. But feel free to just eyeball it, because after all, you're the Billy Joel of your soft potato roll. To shape, pat down each portion of the dough with the smooth side up. Now flip it over so that the smooth side is down. Tuck, fold, and roll everything up towards the center and pinch together to seal. Flip the whole thing over and use your cup hand to loosely roll the ball, allowing the friction of the table and the sides of your hand to repeatedly scoot in the bottom of the ball, creating a nice, tight surface. If need be, flip it over again and pinch the bottom together. Set that aside and repeat until you have 12 smooth balls of dough. Then lightly flatten each ball of dough before placing onto a parchment lined baking sheet, spacing them about an inch apart. Flattening them a little bit will help the final buns take on more of a bun shape instead of them baking into literal spheres. Cover with a damp towel or plastic wrap Leave in a warm place again to rise until plump and airy and about doubled in size. Say another hour to hour and a half, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. With about 15 minutes to go in the proofing time, preheat the oven to 375 Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius with the rack in the center of the oven. We're gonna glaze our buns twice, once before baking to help them acquire a nice even color in the oven, and then once after to give them a gorgeous sheen. Combine three tablespoons of melted butter with one tablespoon of honey. Stir until evenly mixed. Right before baking, gently brush each dough ball evenly all over with a light coating of the glaze. Bake the buns until they are puffed up and nicely even golden brown all over, about 16 to 18 minutes depending on your oven. Once done, the interior temperature of the buns should be about 200 Fahrenheit or 93 Celsius. Immediately while the buns are still hot from the oven, brush them all over again with the glaze. The buns will have developed a slight crust from baking, but the glaze will soak right in, softening them up and encasing them in a shiny, irresistible sheen. It's such a satisfying transformation. Finish off with a light sprinkling of flaky salt. And there you go, the perfect potato bun. I keep saying perfect, but I really mean it. These buns are delightfully soft and squishy. 
They're compactable in just the right way to accommodate anything you want to fill them with. But they're also delicious in their own right. Lightly sweet, creamy in flavor, slightly sticky from the honey glaze. The texture is the perfect balance of soft yet satisfyingly chewy. You can have these buns either sweet or savory. They are so versatile. The buns are great while still warm, but will also keep for days, though I promise they won't last that long in your house. So those are my perfect, soft, amazing, greatest ever potato buns. They are honestly like so good. So I really do hope that you give them a try. Like it couldn't be any easier, right? Potatoes, everything bowl, dump, mix, bake, and you've got perfect buns. Hello. Um, if you do want to give them a try, the full written recipe with all the ingredient amounts and the instructions are in the description. Please comment below and let me know how it goes. If you do try them, I would love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining me on another week of Sheldo's Kitchen, where we make delicious food that are good to eat and we can eat at home. <laughs> that was so eloquent. Um, anyway, thank you so much. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye.